Okay, so now we're going to come back to the difference between inviscid and viscid flows, which means we need to talk about boundary layers. All right, and this is from section 1.11 of your book. Now, all real flows are viscous, but in some flows, the viscous effects are much more important than in others. And a surprisingly large amount of useful aerodynamic flows can be treated as inviscid uh, for analysis purposes. And typically, viscous effects only matter where the velocity gradients are large, and that generally means near boundaries. And this is due to the no-slip condition. And you should have learned about this in your second year fluids. And the no-slip condition just says that the fluid particles that are directly next to a wall have to be moving at the same speed as that wall. So if the wall is stationary, the fluid there has to be stationary. So since far away, from the wall, the fluid's moving at whatever free stream velocity it has, there has to be a velocity gradient that takes you from zero up to that value. And that region of velocity gradient is what we call the boundary layer. So you can naturally divide most flows into two regions, an inviscid region And a boundary and boundary layer. So to show what I mean about this division of regions, if we have an airfoil, say then as flow moves over the airfoil, exaggerate this, boundary layers will grow on both sides. As you move downstream. And so this region inside the boundary layers, that I'm shading here, is where the viscous effects are important and outside, everywhere out here, viscous effects are not very important. And so one way to think about the effect of boundary layers and viscosity is that it moves the inviscid flow. So the inviscid flow basically sees the boundaries uh, I've drawn in blue here rather than the actual object drawn in black. Now we'll discuss viscous effects and, and boundary layers as needed throughout the course, but as I said, alluded to here, our primary interest is how they affect the main inviscid flow outside of the boundary layer. So we're mainly interested 
in how boundary layers affect the inviscid flow. And the main non-dimensional parameter that governs the behavior of boundary layers is the Reynolds number of the flow. Re, the Reynolds number. So a large Reynolds number means that viscous effects will be confined relatively close to the walls of the objects or to the boundaries of the flow. And a small Reynolds number means that viscous effects will spread out into a larger region of the flow.